In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up an ESP32 web server that can control a GPIO pin using PWM, pulse width modulation, to control an LED's brightness. This server can also be used to control servo motors. For this tutorial, you'll need an ESP32 board, an LED, and a 220 ohm resistor. Okay, so now I'm going to run through the sketch. What we'll need to do is we'll need to download and import libraries from GitHub, because they're not included in the, in the Arduino IDE. Okay, so the first one there is async TCP. So click on the user's git, he's Mino Dev. You can click on the link in the comment, which will bring you to his git. You click the word code and go down to download zip and then you're going to download that. And now the second one, which is the ESP async ser web server. So download zip. Now, once they're downloaded, you go to sketch, import library and add zip library. Okay, so you're going to browse to your download folder where they're contained and you're going to click choose. Uh, you're going to have to do this twice one for each uh, library you're installing. So drill down to your downloads folder and click choose. I don't need to do this because I've already installed them already, but once you're done that, you can move on to the next step. Okay, so now the next step is to replace the SSID, which is your network name with your own network name and the password with your network password. You can also choose which pin you want to control. So I'm going with pin four. And then afterwards you can scroll down. Okay, so now we're going to set the, the pulse width modulation settings. So we have a frequency of 5000 Hertz. We uh, declare the PWM channel as zero and we're going to use an eight bit resolution because it's fine for an LED. That's uh, two to the power of eight to two five five zero to two five five. We're going to declare the constant character input parameter, which will be used by the Java section. And next we're going to instantiate the web server, the asynchronous web server, onto port 80. Once that's done, we set up our HTML code. So you can see there, constant car HTML code. And we have the metadata. And then the CSS code. So this is what you're going to use if you want to change the style settings of your web server. So you have H1 for heading 1, H2 for heading 2, P for paragraph. Description of your body, so that's the width and the margins, and then the slider description. So you have the background of the slider and the thumbnail of the slider. So you have different settings there, like height and width, the radius, and the color. So you can change the color background by editing the color in a hex format, which you can get online pretty easily for whatever color you like. I urge you to check out there's a W3 Schools tutorial on how to adjust the, the CSS on sliders in particular. So I can just show you that now and I'll include the link in the description below. So this basically just includes lots of useful information on how to vary the style in particular of the sliders. Uh, so you can vary the color, the width, the shape of the, of the nail going across um, and the radius, the height and other customizations to the appearance. Okay, so if you scroll down now to the body, you can see H1, Mishmash Labs. I'm going to switch over to the server, and you can see where that H1, see Mishmash Labs, the heading one goes. Next, we have the image, which in my case is pulled from the web uh, URL. So you can insert any URL here, and it will pull the image and insert it into your server. Okay, down to H2, which is our heading 2, and I have ESP32 PWM slider and LED brightness. So they're on two separate lines. So you can see ESP32 PWM slider and LED brightness. So that's the output. And now scrolling down a little bit further, we have P, which is for paragraph and CSS. And uh, this section here pulls out the slider value and it gives it live to the server. The next section is the slider itself, uh, which updates by the function. That's update slider PWM. You set a min and a max and a resolution here. 
This is the function, the JavaScript function, update slider pwm. Uh, so what happens here is a variable gets the element value of the pulse switch modulation slider. Uh, it then sends a HTTP request, which updates the value uh, every time you change it. Okay, so scrolling down a bit further, we finish off with the HTML closing, closing brackets. And then we have a string function, which updates the button. Uh, it updates the value, basically. Down to the setup loop, we begin serial communications. Uh, this is mostly for debugging over USB. Next, we will set up the pulse width modulation channels. To do this, we use LEDC setup function and you pass through the PWM channel, the frequency and the resolution. Uh, the PWM channel is not the GPIO pin. So there's 16 channels in the ESP32, which can do uh, pulse width modulation. And you can set these up individually and then you attach them afterwards to the GPIO pins. So for me, I've gone with frequency 5000 hertz and a resolution of, of 8, which is 0 to 255. So there's up to 16 bit resolution in the ESP32. Um, once you've finished setting up the channel, you then attach the channel to the GPIO pin. So to do that, then you use the LEDC attach function and you pass through the LED pin. So in my case, I'm using pin four, and then you pass through the channel, which you just set up. So I'm using channel zero, which I declared earlier on in the script. So I'm attaching pin four to channel zero. Once the pin has been attached to a channel, you use the function LCD write, where you pass through the channel and the slider in an int format. Okay, so once that's done, then we can connect to the Wi-Fi network using Wi-Fi begin, passing through your network SSID and your password. And then after that's connected, it will serial print the local IP address. And then we'll detail the route to the route or web page. So by doing this, we use the web server and we show the route for the HTTP get requests uh, to send the HTML code and the update button. Okay, so then after that, then we send the get requests to the ESP IP with the slider value and the input message. There's plenty about this in the asynchronous web server example, if you look in your sketch folder, uh, where you can learn more about it. So basically what's happening is the slider has been sent through HTTP get using the, the asynchronous web server request uh, and the input message. So basically it goes, if the request has an input parameter, the input parameter is equal to the value. Uh, then the, pin, the pulse width modulation slider is equal to the input message. And then you write the LED uh, with the new value. And if not, it goes no message sent. Um, and there's also some debugging there to send OK once it's done. OK, so then we go web server begin finally to start the web server. And if you look down in the loop, the main loop, you can see that it's empty. Uh, this remains empty. And the reason for this is because it's an asynchronous web server, which means it's running in the background. OK, so when you're ready, you can compile and upload your sketch to your ESP board. And while that's doing that, I'll show you the wiring I'm going to use in Fritzing. So basically, I have my ESP32. I have a yellow LED. I have a 220 ohm resistor. Okay, so I'm going to start off by attaching a red wire between the GPIO pin 4 and the positive side of the LED. That's the anode. Then I'm going to connect the ground pin to one leg of the resistor and the cathode of the LED to the other leg of the resistor. I'm going to put them black as well so you can just tell that they're the ground side. And there's the wiring diagram now. So I'm going to implement that in real life on my breadboard. So I have my ESP32 sitting on the breadboard. I'm going to get my yellow LED connecting the positive side to GPI, GPIO pin 4 and the negative to the ground plane. And then I'm going to get the 220 ohm resistor. I'm going to connect it between the ground pin and the ground plane. So that's just connecting the, the resistor to the LED. Okay, so now I can open up my web server. You can get the IP address from the serial monitor once it's connected to the network. From here, you can scroll down to the slider and start to adjust it. 
So you can see as I increase the percentage, the brightness also increases. It also works in reverse. So as I decrease the brightness, the brightness decreases. I also attempted this with the blue LED just to see how it would work. You can see it's quite nice as well. So as I increase, the brightness also increases. And that's another tutorial brought to you by Mishmash Labs. If you've liked this video and you'd like to see more from us, please press like below and subscribe to our channel and turn on the notifications by hitting the bell icon. Thanks for watching. If you've liked this video, check out the other videos on our channel to see what might suit you. Thanks again for watching and we really like your support.